Papa woke Joachim early on the morning of Monday the 21st of December. We must hurry up and get going, he said. I have to go to work a bit early today, you see. But this is important too, maybe even more important than my job. Joachim sat up in bed and opened the advent calendar. He'd almost begin, begun to dread Christmas because then there wouldn't be anything left of the calendar. That day there was a picture of a village beside a shining lake. The village and the low hills around the lake were bathed in gold. Joachim unfolded the little piece of paper that had fallen out of the calendar when he opened it and read aloud. Evangelil Early one morning, at the end of the second century after Christ, the companions tumbled at top speed into Damascus on the bank of the river Barada. They sped past two soldiers who were guarding the western gate and sprang in along the straight street that cuts right through the city. The soldiers turned to one another in confusion. What was that? Only a gust of wind from the northwest. But it wasn't just wind and sand, I thought I saw people as well. The two soldiers were reminded of an old story from a few years ago about something that had happened at the Eastern Gate. A group of soldiers had been knocked over by a procession that had approached the main street and thundered out through the city gate. It had consisted of people and animals and one of the soldiers thought he'd seen angels as well. For as Elizabeth, the Viriel and all the others rushed out through the Eastern City Gate, they happened to bump into some Roman soldiers. The soldiers fell down, picked themselves up in confusion and tried to see where they had gone. But the procession was soon many years and miles away. Late in the afternoon, one day in the middle of the second century, they came down to the lake of Gennesaret in Galilee. They stopped in front of a village and looked out across the shining water. The hills lay like a wreath around the lake and now that the golden evening sun was shining on them, Elizabeth thought the lake looked like a blue china bowl edged with gold. The village consisted of simple houses with a small shed for livestock at one end. Between the houses walked loaded donkeys led by men wearing tunics and cloaks. The women in loose clothing were carrying jars on their heads. We are in Capernaum, which is on the old caravan trail between Damascus and Egypt, exclaimed, exclaimed Ephraim. Here Jesus called his first disciples. One of them was the customs official, Matthew, for Capernaum was an important customs station. Others were the brothers, Simon, Peter and Andrew, who were both fishermen. Follow me, said Jesus, and I will make you fishers of men. He helped them to keep, catch all the Ordinary fish too, Imperial hastened to add. A very all nodded. Once, when Jesus was standing beside the lake to speak to a large crowd of people, he caught sight of two boats lying further down the beach. One of them belonged to Simon Peter. Jesus went on board Peter's boat and asked him to put it out from the land. Then he sat in the boat and talked to the crowd from the lake. That was a good idea because then all the people could see him while he spoke. When he had finished speaking, he asked Simon Peter to row further out and cast his nets there. Peter said he tried to catch fish all night without getting a single one. All the same, he did as Jesus asked, and then he caught so many fish that the net broke with the weight of them. Another time they were out on the lake, said Imperial, suddenly a storm blew up and the disciples were terrified of drowning, but Jesus simply lay down and slept. In the end, he was forced to quieten the storm in order to calm the disciples. He wanted to show them that they had very little faith, explained Imperial. Yes, indeed, said Imperial vigorously. Yet another time the disciples were out on the lake alone when Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him, they were scared because they thought he was a ghost. But then Simon Peter saw it was Jesus. He thought he'd show off a bit to prove how much faith he had. So he stepped out of the boat and walked on the water too. It went well at first, but soon he grew afraid of the waves and began to sink. He called to Jesus and asked him to save him. Joshua struck his shepherd's crook against a heap of broken stones. To Bethlehem! To Bethlehem! They sped off along the shore of Lake Gennesareth. Before long, a ferial called to them to stop. He pointed up at a shelf in the rock. That's where Jesus gave the famous Sermon on the Mount. He talked about the most important things he wanted to teach us. So what were they? said Elizabeth. 
the cherubim Puriel spread his wings, jumped up in the air and said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Here he was interrupted by Ethereal. Yes, he taught them to pray. Above all, he wanted to teach human beings to be kind to one another. He also wanted to show that nobody is perfect in the sight of God. Blessed are the merciful, said Imperial. Whoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn him the other also. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Whatsoever you would do that men should do to you, do ye even so unto them. That's enough, thank you, interrupted Ephraim. We know you remember it all, and I should think so too as one of the angels of the Lord. All three wise men clearly wanted to say something. Casper and Balthazar nodded at Melchior and let him speak. But it's not enough to learn such rules of life by heart. It's more important to try to follow them. The most important thing to do, something for people in need, for people who are ill and poor and for people fleeing from their homes. That is the message of Christmas. To Bethlehem, attempted Joshua again. To Bethlehem! They had scarcely got up to speed when the fairy all turned to Elizabeth and told her that they were running through the area where Jesus had fed 5,000 people with only a few loaves and fishes. Yes, indeed, said Imperial. Jesus wanted to people to share the little they had. If only they could learn to share with each other, nobody would be hungry or poor or very rich either. But it's better that nobody's poor and hungry than a few people are rich. When they came to the village of Tiberias, they turned away from the lake of Gennesaret up through a hilly landscape. At the head of a fertile valley with palms and fruit trees stood another village. The Ephirial called the procession to stop. Angel time says 107 years have passed since Jesus was born. This town is called Nazareth. Jesus grew up here as the son of Joseph the carpenter. It was here that one of the angels of the Lord appeared to Mary and told her she was going to have a child. He had scarcely finished speaking when something seemed to fall through a hole in the sky. The next moment, yet another angel was standing in front of the procession. In his hand, he held a trumpet. The angel blew once on the trumpet and said, I am the angel Evangelil and I proclaim to you a great joy. There is only a short time left until Jesus is born. Imperial began fluttering around Elizabeth. He's one of us and will be with us on the last part of our journey to Bethlehem. What had rem happened reminded Elizabeth of the words from the old Christmas carol. The angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. She sang in as pretty a voice as she could. The three wise men clapped their hands because she sang so beautifully. That embarrassed her, so that shouldn't all look at her. She said, I can see we must be getting close to Bethlehem if there are so many angels here. Joshua gave one of the sheep a little slap on its rump. To Bethlehem! To Bethlehem! Now there were only a hundred years to go before they reached the city of David. Papa had sat staring in front of him while Joaquin read the last lines from the piece of paper. Now things are starting to fall into place, he said. You mean they've arrived in the Holy Land, said Mama. Papa shook his head. Quirinius said something yesterday when they were approaching Damascus. It's good to be home again, he said. Naturally, because the governor of Syria may have lived in Damascus at one time. But I seem to hear John's voice. It's good to be home again. You mean John made the ad magic advent calendar him? He really does come from Damascus, asked Mama. Papa nodded. For who is Quirinius in the extraordinary story? It was Quirinius. Quirinius, who gave Elizabeth an advent calendar, the one with the picture of the fair-haired girl. That's how he's imagined himself into the story he's telling. Himself and the young woman he met in Rome, he's put it into the middle of this long story, because although Quirinius and the advent calendar only come into the 12th and 13th chapters, Quirinius has said Dixie all the time when he said something to say. That means I have spoken. And I can hear John's voice again. He has spoken and what he has said in this remarkable advent calendar. But an interesting bit of information came out today. What's that? asked Mama and Joaquin together. The old flower seller has described many towns and places on the long journey to Bethlehem. But today the description was more exact. 
He writes about the straight street that cuts right through Damas Damascus from the western to the eastern gate. Only someone who's familiar with the place would write like that. Perhaps you're right, said Mama, but don't you think you may have really heard the old story about the, old, about the soldiers who were knocked over by a procession of angels? Nonsense, snorted Papa, then he stopped himself. But nothing can be discounted. If only we could find him again. Joaquin was thinking about something quite different. He looked down at the piece of paper that he'd been reading from, put his finger on one of the sentences and said, The wise men said it's important to do something for people who are fleeing from their homes. What do you think he meant by that? I suppose he was thinking of refugees and people like that, said Papa. Exactly, said Joaquin. That's just what I thought. What do you mean? asked Mama. I thought I had something to do with the lady in the photo. She was a refugee too. Besides, she was his girlfriend. Papa got to his feet. We better hurry, he said. I have to be off in ten minutes. Before Joaquin fell asleep that evening, he sat for a while playing with the letters of the alphabet. He thought about John, who had met Elizabeth in Rome, and about Rome that turned into a word for love when he read it backwards. Finally, he wrote some more magic letters in his notebook. The diagram looked like a door, or perhaps a door that was inside another door. But what was inside that door? 